Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be all about the books that I'm hoping to read during the month of October. October, officially fall. It's been fall for me for a while now. I mean, I'm rocking giant sweater because it's cold. It's like under 10 degrees Celsius right now. So like, yeah, it's fall for me. And I have so many books that I want to read. I'm finally back to being excited. I feel like I was reading all year long, obviously, but I wasn't enjoying most of what I was reading. Like a lot of them were just good, but just not amazing. I'm really happy to finally be excited again. I have so many books that I can't wait to read. So it's a long TBR. You will be able to help me choose because I probably won't have time to read everything. But as always, what I don't read can be read next month, so it's fine. So on Patreon, you voted for our book club pick of the month of October. We obviously wanted to go with more mystery thriller horror. And I'm surprised that you guys went with that one, but I'm actually happy. Uh, this is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Enrix. I have read two of his books so far. I have read... Um, my Best Friend's Exorcism and Horror Store and I've enjoyed both of them. They were both like four stars. So enjoyable, uh, almost funny kind of horror books, which weird mix, but it works. So I'm still very excited to try this one. Haunted House are definitely something that I like to read again during the fall. I'm hoping it's going to be slightly creepy. You know, you read it late at night, crack window, if it rains even better with some tea, like I'm all ready for this. So a little surprise, but not a bad thing. So I am going to be reading this one this month. Before I forget, I do have one arc that I'm currently in the middle of. I don't know if I'm going to have time to finish it before the month. Probably not, but uh, a pirate's life for tea so I'll put it on the screen. This is coming out any day now I'll put that also on the screen but I read book one which was a fantasy romance cozy fantasy. You have two main characters one of them she is the magician for the queendom and the other one is a soldier to the queen the mean queen and they run away together to open up a bookshop slash tea shop and it was cute so book two i got my hands on it i will be reading it so far so good but let's go back to some uh, mystery thriller although cozy works really well with fall in my head but psychological thriller i haven't read really any this year i love them yet i'm really picky with the ones i try because it's been hit and miss but in this one my character is a PG professor English professor and she is good at getting away with murder she decides every year at this university to pick the worst man she can find and to him I listen when I saw that premise I was like you know what yeah yeah let's try this so that's on my list uh I'm hoping I'm gonna have time to read that one it's not super long I feel like most mystery thrillers are like 300 something pages so hoping that that will work for me but I'm also even more excited for this one because I'm hoping to do a third slash last edition of this challenge where I've been attempting to try and find one five star book that is mystery thriller horror because like I said it's been hit and miss in general and this one is kind of new which is why I'm gonna sneak in probably this book in there unless I pick up something else but 2021 I think it still counts as fairly recent newest releases but this one is a lock room murder mystery this is the appeal one murder 15 suspects can you uncover the truth which yes so it's a theater troupe they have this last big rehearsal at night and then the next morning someone is found dead so it has to be one of them so I, I love that premise and reviews were fairly positive too so hoping hoping but like i said for me that category is going to be focused on new releases and i'm using my library for most of them that's why i kind of wanted to have one backup that is a physical book just in case but i do have a few that i do currently have my hands on and then some that maybe last second i'll be able to get depending on the waiting list right but they've been on there for a few weeks so it shouldn't be too difficult to get them the first one is all the colors of the dark which is another book by the author that wrote We Begin at the End, which I read and enjoyed, so crossing my fingers. The reviews so far have been really, really positive, so I'm hopeful. From what I've read, it's a like serial killer kidnapping slash romance a little bit, which I'm a little worried about that last portion, but it's set in the 70s after the Vietnam War. And in this town, uh, girls are disappearing, and then at one point there's one from a rich family and this local boy figures out what's going on, saves her, and then it comes back to haunt him and his family, something like that. It sounds a little similar again to his other premise, but I had really enjoyed it, so I'm hoping that this one will work. I tried that one as an audiobook, and this one is going to be the ebook, so we'll see how that functions for me. 
I also wanted to choose an audiobook. Uh, I have Murder Road by Simone St. James. I have enjoyed some of her books before, but everyone told me I was going to hate this or that you guys hated it. So I'm nervous now because I want to love her. I, I mean, I did love some of her books, but I want to love her newest book. And this one is a couple who finds themselves haunted by a bunch of murder on this like deserted road. So hoping to and she usually tends to flip-flops between two timelines and like use a little bit like ghosts so it sounds like it's going to be a little bit like that in here but yeah you guys didn't like it i don't tell me too many details but i'm gonna try it i just don't know if i will use it during that specific vlog because i'm hoping to find five stars so if, if everyone is warning me i'm not gonna like it i might not prioritize it i do also have daughter of mine i have the audiobook and ebook so Depending on what's going on, I will be listening or reading this one. I have enjoyed Megan Miranda a lot. I don't tend to give her books five star, but she always has murder mystery in small towns and I love those. They give me cozy vibes, which I know is weird, but like it works every time. And I've enjoyed most of her books. So I wanted to try her newest release, obviously. And the premise was intriguing because the main character, her father was the town detective, but her mother is the most notorious criminal in that town. So I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna try it. So it sounds again that it's gonna be a small town vibe. So I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. The other ones, I don't think I'm gonna have them before then. So first lie wins, which you guys told me I wasn't going to like, but then there are two that I'm really excited for. But again, it's currently saying nine weeks. It doesn't mean anything because sometimes, you know, people return them or skip them, but I have the eyes are the best part. Let me know if I should prioritize it. I do have murder in the family and I have incidents around the house. I wanted to try something else by Josh, Maller Josh Mallerman because I liked Bird Box. I know a lot of people love to hate it, but I liked it. I thought the movie handled it better, but I liked it. And then I tried Mallory, the second book, which sucked. Um, so I wanted to give him another shot. So why not his newest release, which I feel like I've seen it going around. So I'm excited to try it. And then this one, I'm definitely not getting it, but I, I wanted to mention it because I'm too excited. But We Solve Murders, which finally came out and I put my name on the waiting list. And currently it's saying several months, <laughs> not even a specific time, but I'm like 71 on five copies. So they only have five copies. They will get more. So it probably won't take that long, but Definitely not getting it next month. <laughs> I do have one cozy one that I should be able to get to, and it is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, which I've seen this author getting more and more hype. I don't know how much spice there is in it, but it's like small town romance and fall-esque. So like, I wanted to try it. Uh, the other one that I don't think I'm gonna have time to get to, unless again, someone returns it early, is The Spell Shop, which also is a cozy witch's kind of vibe which it's been hit and miss for me but like I love that trope that you know small town witches so I take the risk every time because I want to love them and like some of them become all-time favorite and some of them I can't finish which has happened a few times so far this year but I'm hopeful um it's like cottagecore vibes apparently so yeah <laughs> and there's a librarian in there so of course I'm gonna read this Anyway, going back to the books that I own, I have a couple that are new releases or new to me. Um, my head came out with this book. This is The Life Impossible. This is definitely not fall vibes, but I can't just read fall books. I can, but like, let's pretend that I can't. Uh, this one is also a main character who goes to a small town, right? Her friend passed away and left her this house on this island in Greece. Is it Greece? It just, yeah, Greece, no. It says Med Mediterranean. Oh, I thought it was Greece. Mediterranean. I can't say it. Mediterranean. So her long lost friend left her this house. So she goes there trying to find, you know, fall back in love with life again. So uh, something hopeful. Again, cozy works for fall because again, big sweaters, candles, it works, it works. So that's that. And then I have the Dollmakers, which is an adult fantasy standalone. This is a new release that got a little mention by Brent Sanderson and apparently the magic system is really unique and apparently it's also a little cozy. So, but uh, basically the magic system is based on these dolls <laughs> and they protect them from like demons or something. So I'll keep you updated, but I am excited because I have been wanting to read more and more fantasy and I feel like I've been burnt with like, they're always the same thing. Like always like medieval inspired, which is an excuse for some content that I don't want to read anymore. So 
I thought this could be cool. And then I do want to give another shot to Elena Ferrante. I love the Neapolitan series by her. I will never stop talking about it. And then I tried the book by her and it was a little, a little bit much for me. So I wanted to try The Lost Daughter. But you're following a middle-aged divorcee and her two daughters leave with their father for Canada. <laughs> And she thinks she's gonna feel uh, lonely, but it's the opposite that happens. She feels very like the freedom. So I think this is gonna be what I thought the other one was going to be. So again, it's not super long and there is an adaptation. This is the actress that plays the stepmother in Fleabag. So <laughs> I wanted to watch that, but I gotta read the book first. So I have so many that I'm so excited about that I don't even know where to start. I also wanna read more nonfiction, which I think I'm just gonna let myself figure out whatever I'm in the mood for. In the vlog that I actually am currently filming, I did include a clip of my bookshelves. I'm gonna include it right now so you can see what I have. If there's anything that you think I should pick up, let me know. I've obviously read some of these, but I've been really trying to not put too much pressure on the ones that I pick because it's been on and off all year, but right now it's on and I'm enjoying a lot of the ones I've been picking up. So I'm wanting to, I want to keep that going for myself. So don't want to pick too many right now, but I will be reading some because I'm still going to be doing my series where I try to get my life together. It's been going well so far and I want to finish more series. That's why I've been trying to read a lot of set alones lately because I'm trying to not compete too much with that challenge, which is a silly idea really. I should just focus on series in general, but it's been hard. It's been hard. So I haven't decided yet which one I will be picking up for the next installment during the month of October. I'm doing it right now for September so it feels like it's too much like right now I'm already doing this so depending on how it goes but I will definitely continue reading some more fantasy because it's been it's been the thing I've been picking up series for. That's all I read series wise pretty much so yeah we'll see what I pick up during the month of October. And as always, I will be doing my read it or unhaul it challenge, which it's been really fun, but I think I needed to not just do that throughout the whole year. So that's why doing these other challenges have been really helpful. I foresee that I will be reading more coziness when we get to November because I'm starting to put some of those on my TBR. So it shows I'm like shifting a little away from mystery thrillers and more cozy fantasy. So that's the vibe for October. I feel like I have the most amazing TBR ever. I'm really excited about so many of these and I might pick up other ones because like I said, I've been looking at my shelves. I've been really having fun picking up also some from the library or new releases and arcs, which I don't really do often. So I think October is going to be one of my best reading month. I think that's it in terms of the books I will be reading, but October is going to be an amazing month because I have so many fun videos coming up. I have books about murder mysteries because again, it's fall. I'm going to also be doing videos about sci-fi because I have done my best fantasy series and standalone videos. I will link that if you're interested, but I'm going to do the same thing with sci-fi because obviously I haven't read a ton of sci-fi this year, but it is one of my favorite genre in general. And I think the video I'm the most excited about, I'm gonna redo what I did last year and it's to choose a best book of the year, but like one per month. Cause it's different from what I will be posting in my best books of 2024 in December, right? Every month I don't necessarily read my all time favorite books and some months you read a lot of them. So you have to like figure out which one is the best one. So that's definitely the one that you have to, you can look forward to. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up. I'll put more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out, including I did one about uh, pop through books that I think are worth the hype. And you know what? I was mentioning my best fantasy standalone. You can click here to watch that one. And I will see an upcoming video very soon. Bye.